Okay, let's talk about force control now. Uh, this is the last, or this is not the last, There's, this is one of three different force modes. And uh, the purpose of this is to achieve a certain force and hold it for a certain amount of time. Um, I don't like the layout that we have here, but uh, so I've got a document that's accompanied with this video. Should be a link to it in the in the below text. And what I have here is is this. So force control. The the servo itself is in torque mode when it is uh, regulating the uh, the force, and it's important to understand there are different licenses. Like there's Evo two, Evolution two, which is what is shown on the screen here, and there's no licenses required. And then Evo 3, which is existing right now, which is uh, version 133, uh, there's licensing with that. And when you buy that, you either buy an advanced license or a standard license. The standard license does not have force control. Force control is only available in Evo 3, advanced license. Um, so that's shown right down here. And when you are using force control, there is, uh, let me just show you here, there are some control settings. And you have a KV value, a KP. So you've got, you know, proportional integral and derivative. And these are basically tuning. So if, if you've got some really relaxed values, the force regulation will be very poor. If you've got it too high, the, the gains basically, then it'll be uh, uh, basically the opposite end of the spectrum. And when it's tuned properly, then you will have proper force control. The, uh, there's no real method of tuning it other than setting the values and, and going with the flow here. There's a velocity switch, which I'll talk about in a second. And then there's some limits that uh, are applied to the, to the moves here. And this is force control. And I've got, like I said, my document here. I don't like how it's laid out. So I've got another uh, page in my document here. So you have the existing layout. And uh, and then I, over on the right-hand side, I've moved some stuff around. And I have what I call a logical layout, which is you know flow from top to bottom. And basically, you've got... Um, configured failure reaction, you've got the control settings, velocity switch, and then the main settings here. So the idea here is to, when using the velocity switch, is to get close to the target where you want to apply the force. And what this velocity switch does is it will blend the position move to the force move. So it'll move to uh, middle position, 25 millimeters at 45 millimeters per second. And as soon as it gets there, it's going to blend its move into a force move, which is now going to be at a velocity of 20 millimeters a second with a target force of 500 Newton. And when it achieves 500 Newton, you're supposed to, uh, it's supposed to hold that force for 500 milliseconds or whatever you specify here. If at any point in time that you uh, encounter a maximum position of 45 millimeters or a maximum force of 505 or time limit over or you're outside your force tolerance, meaning your gains might be out, then what will happen is you'll get a not okay pass and the axis will move to its configured failure reaction target, which is 5 millimeters at a velocity of 5 millimeters. And this over here picture here is the best way I can represent what I think in my head. And basically, you know, you do your approach velocity. There's your middle position. So you're m moving very, very fast until you're reaching your target. Then you ramp down into the new velocity with the new, with a target force. And then once you hit your force, then this yellow duration is the amount of time you're going to hold the force. So hopefully that's a little bit better explanation. Uh, in the document, I do have some uh, example graphs here. 
and you know it shows you it ramping up you got a time time frame here and the holding time is three three seconds here so i'm going to hold it for that time and then the move's over over here i'm only holding for 500 milliseconds and the limit of course must be larger than the time that you're you're doing this so there's that and here's a couple other examples in here this is all in the document here it gives you a better understanding of what we're looking at here okay and that is it for force control i'll just run a, a move here force control i don't know if i've programmed it yet so i just ran a move and it failed because i've just done some changes physically and like mechanical and uh, i'm just gonna quickly run through a teach process here edit the program okay put it back into manual mode here get into here hit the next button i'm gonna run a sequence here so i'm gonna create a force reference curve here So I ran my reference curve and I've moved my threshold here. Hit the save button, hit the next button. Not using these ones, save. And go back into operation. Auto mode, start. And there we go. And the position, the, uh, oh, there's another part of the graph here, time. And the time here shows you that it's maintaining that force there for that duration of time. And that's it for force control.